welcome to today's program, Marriage and Life Stories with Kansin. This program, we discuss, uh, we have conversations around marriages of young people. We have conversations of uh, mature marriages. We have conversations around uh, parenting. We have conversations about health and uh, basically life stories. My name is Grace Kansime, and uh, if you need to respond, if you need to follow up on discussions, find me on YouTube, Marriage and Life Stories with Kansime. Today's topic is uh, why are young marriage struggling, young marriages struggling to make it to their second or their third birthday. If we look at our generation when we are getting married in our age, in our times, we would get married at 22 years. You would come to the home. Actually, our parents got married at 17, 16 years. We would make our homes. The marriages would stand. We would learn on the job and would get married forever. It's like until death do us part, as the converse, as the vows go. But these days. Our children are struggling. They are married today, the next year the marriage is normal, or if the marriage is still there, they are basically bearing. I have had so many people say I am into this marriage because of the children. Why are marriages struggling this much? Allow me to share with you a few things that I came up with that I have done research on, that I have looked around, that I have interacted with the young people, and what I have actually gathered could be part of the reasons why these marriages suffocate before they see their first, their second, their third birthday. Or if they see their birthdays, it's not a, a lovely environment that they are living in. Number one, we are having a generational millennial generational challenge. Now, as parents, we may never understand the young people born between 1984, that we call the millennial children. Those who are born in the era of uh, Facebook, they are born in the era of YouTube, they are born in the era of Instagram, they are born in the era of Netflix, where movies come out and they are projecting a certain lifestyle around the world. These young people grow up knowing how Americans behave, how they, you know, make the, the proposals real magical. They have looked at the movies, how a man whisks their wife away, they are taking them to the holiday. They have looked at blind dates. They have seen so much. And so by the time they are getting to get ready for marriage, Actually, in most cases, they are never ready for marriage because they keep living in, in some dreamland. So by the time they get ready to, to get married, the girls have certain expectations that they've watched in the movies or Instagram or what the slay queens have posted. And the boys have their different uh, picture of what these marriages should be. And so they get married with those expectations both of them millennials, they are, they are together, the proposals are superb, their dressing is on point, the functions are on point, and they get to the house. Now, when they get to the marriage, they face reality. It is no longer a uh, Facebook marriage, it is no longer uh, internet relationship, it's no longer those dreams that they have been watching. Now. The challenge that comes when they face reality in their homes is it requires parental or society intervention. That is where I go to point number two. Now, number one, the generational problem. Now, number two, as these children are facing these challenges of generational troubles, the internet, the pressures, Remember the abuses and the troubles these children go through are not what we went through. We lived in a society that was closed, that was beautiful, that was peaceful, and what we knew was what our elders told us. But these children are told by the entire world, 
right or wrong, they are learning. And so the other mistake that has been made is we fail to prepare these children for the actual thing, the marriage. What is it that they should look for in marriage? For all the children, the young people that I have discussed with, I have emphasized one thing which the Bible talks about. Marriages are meant for companionship. Getting children and uh, enjoying the sexual relations, they come as secondary, but the major thing is for companionship. And so these children must be told that whatever else is going to happen in the home, companionship must be the main key. For instance, when you come in the house, both of you, what are those things you should do that build your companionship? Number one, if you can save 150000 and buy a water heater so that your wife doesn't have to boil water, you don't cry about boiling water. If you can put your resources together so that you do not have to fight for every piece of soap that is finished, learn to put things in order so that you do not have so much time to fight. Gentlemen, learn to come to the aid of your wife as she cooks, cut the onions, as she fries the, the things, you know, be around her. Do the things together and help each other. You are not going to build a stronger marriage only during those informal work meetings you will build a oneness that will last you for a long time. Number three, unrealistic expectations. Now, when you have unrealistic expectations, where gentlemen look at their wives as, you know, she has to cook, she has to wash the clothes, you know, she has to clean the house, and then at the end of it all, there is no helper in the house, and then, gentlemen, you come from wherever, you sit and relax in your chair, get your newspaper and you start reading, and then you flip through the, the TV channels to watch your football. You are breaking the heart of this young lady. You know, she will do all these things, but her heart will sink, and she will not appreciate you. She will not have the joy that she intended to have in this marriage. And then also some ladies, they, 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 their relationship is so much on the phone. She comes from the workplace. She's busy chatting on the phone with, you know, with her friends or maybe even flirting with other men. And she doesn't even know what is in the kitchen that if she has a helper, what the helper is preparing. You only wait to come and quarrel with what the maid has prepared. Maybe she burnt the beans and then you are just quarreling on the table without knowing. So unrealistic expectations. Gentlemen expect too much from the women. Women expect their husbands to be, you know, ATMs. You look at him, he's an ATM. He must provide, he must buy, he must buy to satisfy insatiable needs. Unrealistic expectations will kill that marriage before the second birthday. You don't expect a gentleman to sit in the house from Monday to Sunday because he married you. You don't expect to interview him all the time to know where he's coming from. And, uh, and you know, it's like you're a battery and uh, he, you are the car and he's a battery. If he's not around, things will not move. Unrealistic expectations will finish the marriages. And so what should we expect of each other? We expect of each other as companions, people who reason together, people who do things together, people who, uh, if they have failed, they pick their pieces together and they rise together. And if they have succeeded, they celebrate their joys together. break let's continue with uh, with our reasons why young marriages are failing to celebrate their second or third birthday or if they celebrate they are just bearing it 
the love that they had in the beginning has completely disappeared. Nobody is, uh, you know, it, it's like, let's be in it. If it fails, we, we go apart. Now, we have looked at two reasons so far. The reason of the generation uh, disconnect, the generation factor. Uh, we have also looked at uh, lack of preparedness uh, or for the marriage when they get into this realistic uh, situation, there is a challenge. The third reason that I will point out to you today is the disconnect between the young people and the parents. Now, this disconnect has played a huge role in raising up children that one, they feel abandoned, they feel uh, they know it all, and the parents uh, feel that their children are bad. You know, they look at them and, and they cannot stand them. If you look at what is happening right now with these lockdowns and whatever, the parents are dreading why the schools are closed. They want the schools to open so that these children can go away. In the past, we used to, uh, our, our, our parents used to look forward to the holidays, to look forward to the children coming back home. And we would sit with our grandparents by the fireplace and they would tell us stories. I remember my grandfather used to tell us a story uh, of, their, of their times when they were dating our grandparents, our grandmother, the things they used to do. And it was really so good that it prepared us to, and we would be looking forward to meeting our own men uh, or, or our boys to look forward to meeting their own ladies and to do those things, the love things that our grandparents told us, our parents told us. What has happened right now? Children are born and, and they look, uh, you know, so connected to their parents, the mothers and their girls and the fathers and their girls and their sons and everything looks so lovely. And the children go up to P7 and the bond is still there. Now, the moment children go to secondary school, they meet a whole wide range of other children from other families. Now, out of those other families, some children are rejected, some children are from the street, some children are from the lovely families where they have never done any piece of work. You know, the maids are there to cook, the maids are there to wash your clothes, the maids are there to make your bed, to, to clean your toilet. And then there are those who have come from the villages and they are all together. Now, in that mixture, if your child has not bonded so well with you, if you have not opened up your heart and loved this child, definitely the peer pressure will overshadow these 13 or so years that you have invested in this child. And so what will they do? They will pick from the characters that they have found. You may be so blessed that your child who has been uh, spoiled in the house pick something good and that child will come in the home and will be very different and so when that child go, grows up like that they will turn out good now if your child realizes that you have been mistreating them and handling them in a very bad way when they pick something different from the, uh, the peers when they come home this child is going to reject you and so what should we do in the upbringing of these children so that there will be good marriage materials for their future spouses? Now, I always endeavor to look after all friends of my children. You never know where your child will pick a spouse. And so when you're spreading love, spread it far and wide because you do not know where your daughter will pick a husband or where your wife will pick a child. Now, another great influence that causes a disconnect is the relationship between the father and the mother. Now, let me tell you, my dear Mr. Husband, if you are going to mistreat your wife and expect your children to be good when their time for marriage comes, you are lying. If you are going to mistreat their mother and expect these children to honor you and to be honorable children in society, you are lying. 
The best gift you can give to your children is love their mother and treat her right. Because your daughter can only wish for a husband who is as good as their father. Your son can only wish for a wife who is as good as their mother. What sort of mother are you in that home? What sort of wife are you in that home? Are you the wife that abuses the husband in front of the children? Are you the wife that puts it to the children that their father is useless? You know, he can never do anything good. He can never amount to anything. And so it turns out that the children say, oh, everything is the mother. No wonder when they are graduating, no matter how much money the father has put in, in school fees, giving them a home, uh, providing food, the little money that the mother gives the children will say, oh, I give all credit to my mother. I will implore you, disconnect in the lives of these children will show up when they get their own homes. When they get their own marriages, that disconnect will show. When you, if you used to be an abusive father, of course your son will struggle in the relationship. She will treat that girl the same way you treated their mother. If the mother was a rebellious, uh, the, the Bible says that we should submit. If she was not submissive to the husband, then the wife will not in any way budge. She will not in any way take her responsibility seriously. She will play around the marriage until when the marriage is on the rocks, the same word they use this time. And so to avoid these challenges for our children in their future families, let's connect with them. Let's live right with each other. Let's love these children. It doesn't matter what you have and what you do not have. Let's love them and teach them how to do housework and teach them to love other people and teach them the idea of humility and submission and bonding. And when they grow up with these characters, when they go to their own marriages, they will definitely not struggle. Their marriages will see the first birthday, second birthday, 50th birthday, and they will live in happiness. Now, the last uh, problem that I will bring out to you is our education system. Look at a situation where parents are waking up to go and work, and they have to be in office by eight. And so to be in office by eight, to beat the traffic jam, they have to take the children to school where they have to be by eight. And so the little young girl wakes up for, you know, they, should, they could be even six, three years old, those who take uh, young children to nursery school. Wake them up at five, bathe them, give them breakfast. At six, they are sitting out of the house. And so they study Monday up to Sunday, up to Friday, then Saturday and Sunday, they are in coaching. And so they are totally disconnected from the work. In addition to studying for five days a week and coaching, they carry this much uh, homework to the house. And so when they get to the house, they can barely open their eyes. They will have their breakfast, their evening tea, they will have their supper, and sit at the table to do that batch of homework. And so they study, they go to secondary school, they go to universities, so they do not connect to any ordinary life at all. It is about studying, 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 cramming, cramming, and excelling and getting first class. And so it turns out that when finally they are ready for relationships, they are ready for marriages, all they know is books. They cannot cook, they cannot wash, Everything was being done by the maids because they have been studying. They cannot clean a house. They don't know. They are running around for work. They are running around to make money, but nothing else. And so frustration sets in. The woman wants her career. The gentleman wants his career. And we remain in that state of a poor education system. Work, work study, study, and no reality of good upbringing. 
what do we do at this moment? As a parent, I did go for schools which were like so much pressure. I wanted my children to know life. I didn't take them to nursery school when they were young. I waited for them to be five years. And so I sat home. I taught my own children. One up to 10, they could read. I taught them the basics of writing. I taught them the real things that they should know. I taught them how to cook. I taught them. And so when they were ready, to go to nursery school, they had known so much. By the time they went to secondary school, we had bonded. I gave up my career at the early stages to make sure that I produce a complete child. Am I saying they are perfect? They are not perfect, but they are good. And so I will implore you, for marriages to be able to stand, to rise beyond the storms they are facing, Let's connect with the children. Let's look beyond the generation uh, challenge. Let's prepare our children for marriage. And let's not pressurize our children with those schools that we feel everyone must attend. Thank you so much for joining me on this program uh, for this and much more. Go back to our YouTube channel, Marriage and Life Stories. Drop a comment. Subscribe if you, if you like the, ch the, the channel and let's grow together and make a better society. God bless you.